Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to City View, and uh, thank you for everyone that's here in person, live and in person, and for you that are watching us online and joining in. We are looking forward to the day when you'll be able to come and join us and be a part of what we're doing here. So, praise God. Are we good back there? Yes? Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we're just going to open in a word of prayer, and then I'll turn it over to Dallas. So, Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. I thank you that we can come together, and no matter what's happening outside, no matter what's happening in the world, our focus is on Jesus, and we've come together to worship and lift up the name of Jesus in this place. And so, Father, we just give you praise today. We give you glory. And we just welcome you here in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Dallas, why don't you lead us in a time of worship today? Amen, amen. Well, so good to be together with everybody. Obviously, we are excited that we can just be able to sing and, and uh, celebrate and give God praise together. So why don't you stand with me? Um, you can clap along, you can praise along, and we'll give God glory. Amen. <laughs> Lifting my hands to 
praise you. I'm lifting my voice to thank you. I'm reaching for you. Jesus, I need you. I'm giving my heart to know you. I'm living my life to serve you.
God is so good, amen. His mercy finds us every day, every day. He makes us anew. Why don't you look towards someone today, maybe someone you don't know, and just give them a wave, tell them that you're glad they're here today. Amen. Well, God is so good, and I wanted to try something new today that we haven't heard before, but maybe some of you have heard it. And uh, the song's called Never Lost, and the whole point of the premise of the song is that God's never lost a battle, and He never will. He's never gonna. He's always gonna be victorious. And the song just talks about there's nothing that God can't do, because He can do all things except fail. That's the one thing he can't do. He's a failure at failing, amen? He's a victor all the time. And so this song just sings about that. And uh, it might be new, so you might just want to listen, and that's okay. But I just encourage you that as we sing this song, just listen to the chorus and just declare that he can do all things, amen? He can do all things but fail. Because he's never lost a battle, and he never will, amen? Amen. When you move, such an easy thing for you to do Is your hand is moving right now You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus And your voice is calling me out And right now, I know you're able And my God can do all things, and you can do all things but fail, cause you never lost a battle, no you never lost a battle, and I know, I know, you never
You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never will. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never will. the battle you never lost the battle I know I know you never will you can do all things you can do all things but fail cause you never lost the battle no you never lost the battle I know I know you never will. I know, I know you never will. Cause I know, I know you never will. He never will. circumstances say right now those words are true that he will never lose that battle and I heard someone say that he never wastes a battle either whatever you're going through right now he's going to turn that for good he's going to turn that into a story of triumph turn it into something that you can use as a testimony amen Crown 
falling down Your wounds are healing The earth began to move And all of heaven knew Death was defeated And oh because of your Jesus and your love so great higher than the stars unfailing love is deeper than the sea your love so It's everything to me. Sing it again. And your love so great, higher than the stars, unfailing love. It's deeper than the sea. Your love so sure, stronger than the mountains. Oh, your it's everything to me How deep, how wide, how long, how high How deep, how wide, how long, how high Oh, how deep
for your love, Lord. Lord, I pray that every one of us would just somehow get a glimpse of your amazing love. Help us to comprehend the, the height and the width and the depth of your love, Lord. Thank you that you love us so, so much, Lord. I thank you that you sent Jesus for us to die for all of us and to make a way for us to be restored, to be renewed, to be reunited with you, Father God. We thank you and praise you for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you that above everything else that your love is so, so important. It is, it's the thing that you've told us to share with the world. Share your love with those around us, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you for filling us afresh today with your love. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to share your love with this world, Lord. And at a time when there's so much confusion, so much uncertainty, and so much fear, Lord, your love comes through. Your love penetrates every situation, every person's life. Your love is what it's all about, Lord. We thank you and praise you for that love. Lord, we pray for our country, Canada. Lord, we thank you that you love our country. You love the people of Canada. Father, we stand in the gap. We pray for this upcoming election that's going to be happening. Lord, we pray that you would put godly people in place, Lord. And that those that stand for righteousness and truth would come forward and, and make their voices known, Lord. Father, I just claim favor for them. Lord, I pray that every, every person who stands up for righteous truth would have favor in this election and, and would be able to be in a position of authority, in a position of leader, that they would, leadership, Lord, that their, their influence in our nation would help turn our country back to the things of God, back to the things that matter, the things that our country was founded on, the things that are going to make a difference in all of our lives, Lord. Those good, godly principles, principles based on your word. And so, Father, we pray for that. And Lord, I pray for our province as well and, and for our city, Lord. I pray that you would just work in people's hearts, Lord. Just draw them to yourself, Father. Give us, give us opportunity, Lord. Lead us across the paths of people who are hurting, who need Jesus, who need hope. At a time like this, Lord, help us just to share your love with them. And that we'd see lives changed and people impacted with the love of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that today, Lord. Lord, I thank you for City View and the things that you've called us to, Lord. Father, continue to just stir in our hearts the, the things that you want us to accomplish in this city and the people that you want us to touch, Lord. I thank you for this new neighborhood that we've moved into, Lord, that we can be able to reach out and touch people's lives. And so, Father, we just thank you for that favor and that opportunity here, Lord. Let our time here have impact in this neighborhood and in this city, Lord. In Jesus' name. Why don't you just sing that, that chorus part again? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your love so great, higher than the stars, unfailing love, deeper than the sea.
good to come together as believers and I just I mean it's special it is a special time when believers can come together the Bible says not to not to abandon or forsake the getting together and there's a reason for that it's because we encourage each other and when we when we come together like this we can lift up the name of Jesus and and God inhabits the praises of his people when we praise him when we lift up his name he comes and and inhabits us and our praises, and he just comes and manifests his presence. And so we're so thankful for that. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you again for being with us today, and thank you. I want to welcome some special visitors that are friends of ours, and thank you for being with us today, Marl and Armin. And uh, what a treat to have you here today. Uh, we have been talking a little bit of the last few weeks about... Uh, who in, knowing who we are in Christ Jesus and knowing what it means to understand that love. And thank you, Dallas, for singing about the love of God today. That is so, so special and it's so powerful. And last week I, I preached specifically about who I am in Christ. Who are we? What, that's the question that we, we ask. We say, who am I? Who, what, who am I because of Jesus? Not who am I because of myself. I, uh, who, I, who I am actually isn't that important, and I actually can't, can't accomplish that much in my life without Jesus in my life. But with Jesus, I am a special person. I am redeemed. I am set free. In fact, you know, I talked about Joel Osteen's uh, confession that he does at his church, so I thought I'd pull it out and, and read it. It says this. It says, he says, I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am redeemed. Forgiven, talented, creative, confident, secure, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, accepted, and approved, not average, not mediocre. I am a child of the Most High God in Jesus' name. Amen. It is in Jesus' name that we can declare those things over our lives. And you know what? It's not because of us, amen? It's because of Jesus. It's because of who He is and what He has established for us, amen? And so I actually ran off a few extras. If anybody would like a copy of that afterwards, come and, come and see me and, and I'll give you a copy of it. So, so that was last week. We talked about who I am in Christ Jesus. And so I got thinking this week about a lot of the things that are happening in our world and around us, and and unfortunately, we've seen the the cases going up and uh, again, and we were all hoping that COVID was behind us, and here they have an increase in cases again. But you know what? We need to, as believers, we need to not focus on what's happening in the world, but we need to focus on who. We are in Christ Jesus and what he's done in our lives and who he has made us to be. Amen. So uh, I have a question for you. I'm just going to um, switch to this stand here for a few minutes. Here's my question for you. Did anybody play baseball growing up? Anybody? Did you, did you play baseball? I, I did. I, no, not, I didn't see very many hands. Okay, you guys. You didn't play very much baseball? Four different teams. One one person said four different teams. Okay, amen. Hang on. Oh, 
All right, so I brought my baseball bat to church today, all right? So if, it, and no, this is not, in, if people misbehave, that's not what it's for. Okay, so listen, uh, in baseball, and I want to give you a little bit of an illustration here. We're going to draw a comparison in a second. Okay, so I, I did a little bit of research. Now, I'm not a super baseball fan, but uh, I did play a little pickup ball. And so I know what a bat is, and I know what a ball is. But um, in, uh, in um yeah, glove too. Okay, so in baseball, a good pitcher will uh, have different kinds of pitches, okay? And uh, so I, I tried to Google it to see what there was, and I found one guy. He said there, there's a number of different kinds. I'll just tell you some of them. Maybe, maybe you may have heard some of some of these before. Uh, one, one thing is called a four-seam fastball, okay? Fastball, Choo! okay, fastball. And then there's a two-seam fastball. I don't know really what the difference is, but one is a four-seam, one's a two-seam. And then there's a cutter ball, right, when the pitcher pitches and, the, and it cuts, the ball cuts. Then there's a split. Splitter, that's another kind of pitch, right? There's a fork ball, a curve ball, a slider, a slurve, whatever that is. I don't know, it must be a curve and a slider put together, I guess. A screw ball, I guess that's one that goes in a funny shape, right? A change up, a palm ball, and a circle change up. Now, these are the ones that this guy said. So here's the thing there's different kinds of pitches, okay? And in baseball, the key. The key to, and I don't mean to, I don't get scared with me waving this bat around here, but the key to uh, being successful in baseball is what? Being able to anticipate those different kinds of pitches that come. And when they come, I mean, if, if you're anticipating a fastball and, you know, then he throws something different, a curveball or something, you're going to miss. You're, you're not going to be successful, right? And so, how you respond to those different pitches. You've got, you've got to anticipate it, and you've got to be ready to respond to them. That's going to determine your success. Well, guess what? That's a little bit like life, too, right? You know, when when uh, life throws you a, a curveball, right? Or it's, uh, maybe it's a sinker, you know, something you're going down fast, right? <laughs> it's a sinker. Or maybe it's a fastball or a, or a slider or something. How do you respond? How do you respond to those things in life? And how you respond to the things that come in life is going to determine your success. Now let's look at some scriptures here. Now one thing that's really important is that, you know, and you'll realize this in baseball, how many know you can't pay, play baseball with just one team, right? You have to have two teams. There has to be someone that's opposing you. That's your opposition, right? And guess what? That's like life too. No, the number one thing, and I, I put this in my notes, and the reason I put it in my notes is because sadly so many Christians go through life and they do not realize that they have an enemy. There is an enemy who is against us, and he wants to defeat us in every way that he can. And he wants to make life difficult for us. You know, the Bible says that the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. You know, that's pretty much like striking out in, in every area of life, right? And, you know, he, the enemy comes, but God has given us promises. Amen. Here's, here's one thing. Uh, Isaiah 59 and 19. I'm going to read it from the King James Version just because that's the way I memorized it growing up. Isaiah 59 and 19 says this, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. But when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, it, 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 I mean, this acknowledges that there is an enemy, and sometimes he comes with things. He come, sometimes it comes with those curveballs. He sometimes comes with those various different kinds of pitches that he comes against us with. But what does it say? What is the promise that we can stand on in Isaiah 59? It says this, When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, I have to say, uh, when the translators did the King James Version, they put the punctu in, punctuation in where they thought it belonged, right? But if we go back and we look at the original texts, and I guess this is Old Testament, so it would have been Hebrew that it was written in, the, 
there was no punctuation. The sentence, the way the structure was, was just, it was put together to present a thought. So here's the thing. We could take that calm out of there, and I don't know if, you, if you're able to see the verse there, but it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, there's a comma there. What if we took that comma out and put the emphasis a little bit different, okay? How about we say it like this? When the enemy shall come in, like a flood, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I believe that the Lord wants to raise up like a flood in our lives. He wants to wash out all of that opposition. He wants us to be flooded with his love, flooded with his mercy, flooded with his grace, flooded with all of the victory that has been promised to us in his word. And so I'm going to propose we should take that calm out and just put it in a little different place. When the enemy comes... Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And guess what? Ephesians 6 and 12 supports this. It says, Ephesians 6 and 12. I'm going to read this one from the New Living Translation. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So our battle is is not a natural battle. It is a spiritual battle. And here's what's important to understand about that. When we realize we have an enemy, and we realize that our battle is not a natural battle, then we're not going to be victorious. We're not going to win with natural means. Okay? Life, I, I thought of this, life is not a slow pitch game. Anybody ever played slow pitch baseball, right? That's different. That's different than, you know, like baseball with a hard ball that is fast, right? Slow pitch, it's like they lob the ball up and, you know, I, I, I okay, I better be careful. I want to be politically correct here. But anyhow, I know there are people who love slow pitch, but you know what? Like when somebody tosses the ball up like this, like you got to be pretty lame if you can't hit it, right? <laughs> but, but that's not how life is. You know, Satan is not a slow, slow pitch king, okay? He is a fa fastball king and he is a curveball king and, and all kinds of cur balls that he throws, right? He doesn't slow pitch and say, here, here's an easy one that you can whack at, right? Satan isn't like that, and life isn't like that. And there are so many things all around us that are screaming for our attention and demanding us to take a stand or a position, especially right now in the world and in society. You know, especially, yeah, we've got an election coming up, a federal election coming up. Then we've got a, a civic election coming up. And, and regardless of all of that, you know, there's everything that's going on, all the rules and the regulations and all of the 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 control that we see you know happening in our lives we're not it's like we're not allowed to just live life and make our own choices it seems like somebody's making all these choices for us right but you know what we've got to anticipate and we've got to respond in faith to those things we can't just let it happen right what what is the what is the natural response if we're not using holy spirit wisdom and direction in approaching the things in our life guess what it'll be like swinging at sucker balls and we'll strike out every single time if we keep if we keep swinging at all the wrong things right now, here's a question that I thought of when I was doing my notes. Is trouble always from Satan? Well, I, I don't really know. I do know that we have an enemy, and I do know that he causes trouble. But I know that sometimes just life throws curveballs. Is Satan behind those or not? Sometimes stuff just happens. There are things that happen in our lives that, that we just we don't expect. We don't see them coming. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're actually in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, I mean... How many of you ever seen a you ever seen a, a a batter get hit with the ball when the pitcher you know gets out of control and the ball comes and and whacks the guy right? Sometimes it it feels like we're in the wrong place and we get whacked with the with the ball the wild pitch right? But you know what? Regardless of all of those. Our response needs to be based on faith. If we respond in the natural, we're going to strike out. If we respond with faith, we're going to hit a home run. We're going to hit, 
the ball out of the park every time. Is God for us? Absolutely. And Dallas continues to sing songs, you know, every week about God being for us. And the one that he introduced today, you know, God, he cannot fail. It is impossible for God to fail in your life and in my life. And no matter what we're facing, God cannot fail. So if we're, if we're, you know, swinging and striking at the ball and we're, you know, we're not seeing the progress, that's a good time to stop and say, God, what am am I missing here? What do I need to be anticipating? What do I need to be responding to? How can I respond to this situation in faith so that I can see a home run, so I can at least get on the base, amen, and not not be, you know, struck out and have to go, you know, back to the dugout. And you know what? God wants to move and work in our hearts and in our lives every time. Um, Here's a, Romans 8 and verse 31 and 32 says this. What then shall we say in response to these things? And I like, the, I like the fact that it said response, okay? It's not a reaction. I'll talk about that in a second, okay? It's a response. What, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Say that. Who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? can be against us? And the, it's a rhetorical question. Who can be against us? Well, only our enemies, only the opposition. If God is for us, right? And then verse 32, it says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. God wants us to succeed. He wants us to be successful at every at bat. Every time we step up to the plate, God wants us to be successful. That's his heart for us, right? And it's just, I've used the example before, but, you know, with the kids and, and with the grandkids, I, I just want them to be successful. I want every one of them to experience the best in life. And that's what God wants for you. He wants you when you step up to the plate and you're faced with opposition, you're faced with that curveball that's coming down the line. God wants you to be able to respond and he wants you to know that he wants to graciously give us all things. Let's read it again. Verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. That's Jesus. He gave Jesus for us. How? Will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Because of Jesus, we have all things. Because of Jesus, in every situation, we can be overcomers. Yes, amen, amen, amen. God is for us. John 16 and verse 33. I'm going to read this one from the Passion. John 16, 33 in the Passion Translation says this, And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me. Now, this is Jesus talking. Okay, I'm going to back it up. Jesus talking here. He says, Everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. Jesus wants you to be confident. Remember the confession that we, that we read before, the, the one that Joel does in his church? God wants you to be confident. And not confident in yourself, confident in who Jesus is. And confident in what Jesus has provided for you in life. Amen? So you will have great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows. But you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world because of Jesus we are conquerors in other words when the game starts and when they you know when they go out for the the first pitch you know guess what we know the outcome of the game because God has promised that we will always win I have conquered the world Jesus has promised the victory in our lives so how can I use my face when I'm faith when I'm faced with life's obstacles I, I thought of this example also when I was preparing I don't know if any of you have uh, done any horseback riding or not, but one of the things I remember uh, used to when I was younger, used to, we used to go horseback riding all, all the time, my friend Keith and I. And horses are, are, are funny, you know, they, you, you'd think it's a big, strong, you know, animal. I mean, this thing shouldn't be afraid of anything. He's twice the size of us, right? And you climb up on his back. But you know that they come to little things. They'd come to like a stream, you know, or some little obstacle, and they'd just stop. 
And they look at it like, okay, now what? Now what am I going to do? And it's like <laughs> you got to encourage the horse to do something. Yeah? you got a few options. Do we go, let's say it's a stream. Do we go through it? You know, do we find a way around it? You know, do we step over it? <laughs> you know, or uh, maybe sometimes things come and we move it. Maybe it's a log that's in the way and we come to the log and it's like, okay, are we going to step over it or are we going to get off the horse and, and try and move the obstacle out of the way? Well, you know what? That's the same as life. You know, when we come to things, when we come to challenges, when we come to obstacles in our lives, how, what, what do we do? You know? And with the Holy Spirit working in our lives and the power and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, we'll know, do we go through it? Am I supposed to go through this thing and be victorious? Am I supposed to avoid it? Is it a situation in my life? It's like, okay, this is not going to be good. God, let me find a way around it. Maybe, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? You, there's circumstances and I mean, I'm not even going to get into a whole bunch of examples because I know I see, you know, heads nodding right now. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we need to go around the things and not get, you know, not fall into the trap, right? Sometimes we, we're supposed to go over it. <laughs> Maybe we're supposed to jump. Maybe we're supposed to leap. Maybe we're supposed to whatever, take a plane and fly over it. I don't know. And sometimes we do need to, you know, get our hands dirty, and move that obstacle out of our lives. Sometimes there are things that come in our lives that are meant to destroy us, that are meant to defeat us, that are meant to, to set us up for a strikeout. And God just wants us to use our faith to move that mountain and to speak to it and see it moved out of our lives. And so when we're faced with those things, whether it's a health challenge, the question is, how do we go through some of these things and be victorious? Maybe there's something we need to do different. Maybe there's something that we need to do to go around it. You know, maybe there's something that we can do to just see the victory in, in our lives when we're faced with those kinds of things. And, you know, a lot of people are faced with health challenges. Even today, I, I know there's people that are away because they're facing, facing a health challenge in their life. But you know what? God wants us to be victorious. He wants us to use our faith in that situation. He doesn't want us just to react. He doesn't want, he wants us to respond and he wants us to position ourselves for success. So when we get the bad report or when we see the symptoms come in our life, let's do the things to position ourselves, to, to position ourselves for God's healing to be manifested. You know, I, I often say it to people, if you're facing health challenges, that's a good time to sit down and have communion and take communion and remind yourself of the covenant that we have in Jesus, right? Because it's because of that covenant, it is because of Jesus' stripes that we are healed. And sometimes the things that come in our life are not health things. Maybe we're totally healthy, but we've got some conflict. Maybe that's a, a personal conflict. Maybe that's a, you know, a, a worker or maybe it's a, a family member or there's some situation where we find ourselves in a conflict. And we need, it's a good time to stop and say, God, how can I respond to this situation? Not, you know, it's really easy, I tell you, like, unfortunately really easy in you know when we're dealing with personal conflicts to react okay <laughs> you know it's like oh i just like to punch his lights out well you know what that would be a reaction right but god wants us to respond to those things god wants us to be victorious in every situation but maybe there's a response you know is there something we need to say do we need to avoid a conflict you know do we need to you know go around it do we need to go over it somehow do, what what are the things that the holy spirit is telling us to do and if you're facing and i know there are people even here and especially people that are watching online that i know that some of you are facing conflicts in your life and you need to be asking holy spirit okay how can i respond to this situation rather than react to it if i respond i have a chance to hit a home run if i react i'm just gonna swing out i'm just gonna strike out and i'll I'll get nowhere. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes there are things that come that are disappointments. You know, you've got your heart set on something, you're believing for something, but it just is not coming together. You know, one of the things that I say to everyone, you know, if you're believing for something in your life, <coughs> excuse me, and you haven't seen the breakthrough, don't quit. 
you know, this is the time to, to bear down. This is a time to, you know, to, you know, just turn your brain off and turn your faith on. You know, focus on what God wants to do in that situation. Focus on the miracle that God wants to bring rather than the obstacle that is standing in your way. You know, and whatever that disappointment is, whatever those setbacks are, whatever those things are, that come into your life. God wants you to break through. Amen. And I, actually, as as I'm looking across a crowd today, I, I, I think of stories. Stories are popping into my mind of people that we've stood in agreement with you. We've prayed with you, you know, and in situations where, yeah, there were disappointments and setbacks and where things, it, it didn't seem to come together the way that you thought it would. But faith says, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep swinging. I'm going to keep anticipating so that I can hit the home run. And then what a, what a celebration when, when you do get the victory, when the things do break through, and when you see that impossible situation turned into a possible situation, when you see the, the test become a testimony of what God has done in your life. Amen. That is so awesome. And that's, again, where we think of John 16, 33. And I go back to it again once more. Everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me, the peace that Jesus had, will be in you and will give you, give you great confidence. You need to have that confidence. Amen. God wants to pour out that confidence in your life. Confident in the middle of the battle. You know, you think of yourself stepping up to the plate. And I, I mean, my whole thing is based around baseball today. But okay, you're stepping up to the plate. There's already two guys have struck out. Guess what happens? You need to hit that ball to get on base. Otherwise, your team is, you know, going down. And maybe it's the bottom of the ninth and the other team is up and you are the person that's stepping up to the plate. You know what? If you put your trust in God and if you put your hope and your confidence in Him and if you use your faith, you are going to hit the winning run. Amen? But... We have to turn our, sometimes turn our brain off. We have to stop thinking natural and start thinking in the supernatural. Start thinking the way that God would. Start thinking the way that Jesus would if he was in your situation. First John 5 and verses 1 to 5 says this. A little passage of scripture here. So I'll read it from the New International. First John chapter 5 and verse 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. They're not, okay? It's not something that drags you down. The commandments of God are, are life, right? For everyone is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So here's the key. Having Jesus as our personal Savior and then using our faith, right? Even our faith, it says. This is the victory that has overcome the world. And we, we if we're going to be overcomers, we need to step up to the plate and we use our faith to see the victory, to see that overcoming victory in our lives, right? Through faith in Jesus, we overcome the world and every test and every trial and every circumstance and every obstacle. Amen. First John 4 and 4 in the New King James says this, You are of God, little children, and have overcome. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. This is like this is like the game that is stacked. Okay, when the sta the deck is stacked, right? Or when you step up and you know that the team is stacked. It's got the best batters, the best catchers, the best pitchers, the best of everything. That's the team you're on. That's God's team. And with Jesus as the as the captain and the leader of our team, we can step up and we can be confident that in every situation Greater is he who is working in you and in your life than he who is in the world. When you're faced with one of life's fastballs, 
stop and ask, do I go <laughs> over it, around it, through it, or do I move it? In every situation, we need to have the kind of attitude that says that we're victorious. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 in the New King James says this, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And we've quoted that verse so many times in this church. But we walk by faith and not by sight. We can't get distracted with the circumstances. We can't get distracted with what we see with our natural eyes. We've got to focus on living life by faith. The New Living Translation says it this way, For we live by believing and not by seeing, right? We can't, we can't just use our natural eyes. And sometimes our natural eyes, you know, we, we turn on the TV and what we're seeing on TV, that can influence us. But you know what? If, if we are not seeing victorious things, we need to turn the TV off and say, you know what? I don't receive that in Jesus' name. But I believe that I am an overcomer. And I believe that I will be victorious. And I believe that I will hit a home run. And I believe that I will be successful in all of the things that life throws at me. I'm going to read it once more, this time in the Amplified Classic. It says this, it says, for we walk by faith, we regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction or belief, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with a trust and a holy fervor. Thus we walk, not by sight or appearance. We walk with that holy fire burning inside of us, anticipating and expecting and looking forward to all of God's bests. In life, when trials and tests come, we have a choice to react or respond. And you know what? In my opinion, if we react to things, we're going to strike out every single time. But if we respond to the trials, we will use, and I, I put, put this, we will use a calculated and measured response based on the circumstances and sufficient to stop, reverse, overcome, and always be victorious in those situations. That's what responding is. And you know what? You know, yeah, let's put away the punching gloves. Let's respond in faith to the things that come in our lives. So here's the question that I thought of as I close. How do we best prepare ourselves for life's sinker balls and all the other balls that come? Well, spend lots of time in the batting cage. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've ever seen those batting cages. Maybe you've been in them. I, I know we went in one one time. They used to have some over here on the white mud. Uh, there was some batting cages right about where they're building that whole uh, uh, the train thing, that big LRT station for the south side. There used to be some batting cages there. And I went in there and I like the balls just went whizzing past me every time. Like it's like, how do you hit these balls? Right. <laughs> You know what? But you know what? The more time you spend in the batting cage, these guys are laughing back there, okay? Uh, the, the more time you spend in the batting cage, the more you're going to be able to anticipate the different balls that come, and you're going to start to connect with those balls, and eventually you're going to start to hit those balls, and you're going to make some progress. Well, what's the batting cage? Huh, it's right here. This is my batting cage. Spend time in God's Word. Spend time in his word, spend time learning and just studying and saying, God, get it down in my heart. I want to understand how much you love me. Just prepare me for life's pitches, you know, so that when I get in the batting cage, that I'll start hitting the ball every single time. So the question is, what are you facing today in your life? What balls have been thrown your way that you need to overcome, that you need to see the victory? You know what? God wants you to hit a home run every single time. And you know what? I want to just pray for you today. If you're here today and you're facing some things, just bow your head just for one second. And if there is something that you want me to pray for you today, just slip your hand up. I want to pray for people that are facing. Amen, amen, amen. I see those hands. I want to pray for you. God wants you to be victorious. He doesn't want us to go through life. And I liked what, I liked what Joel said, not, not average and not mediocre. That's not what God wants for us. He wants every single one of you, and especially those of you that have put your hand up today. God wants you to be victorious. He wants you to connect with that ball and send it sailing right out of the park. But you know what? We've got to put our trust in Him. 
And we have to approach every situation by faith and not by fear and not by natural things. So I'm going to just pray for you. Father, we thank you and praise you today that in life's game, in life's challenges, in life's obstacles that come, Lord, as we respond to them based on your word and based on your promises and use our faith to boldly declare and boldly, boldly go after those circumstances, Lord, we will see the victories come. And Lord, I pray even right now for people that have raised their hands, Lord. Even as we're here, Father, I thank you that you are moving in hearts, Lord. You're speaking to people right now. And I know there are people that are watching online. Maybe they're facing what seems like impossible odds, but with you, God, all things are possible. And so, Father, I pray for them right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You know, I just feel strongly, and I don't know if it's somebody that's here or somebody that's watching online. I just feel strongly that God is ministering to you right now. And he's telling you something, and you need to stop and listen. Because there is a word for you today. And maybe you've been anticipating a slow pitch, and it didn't come like that. Instead, it was a fastball that came, and you weren't ready for it. But you know what? God wants you to overcome. And you know what? You're going to step up to the plate again. And the next time that ball comes, you are going to knock it. And you're going to knock it hard. And God is saying, if you'll put your trust in me today, I will show you the right things to do to see that victory, to see that breakthrough. Maybe it's something that you've been you know, facing for many years. Maybe it's something you're struggling with. But God is saying to you today, trust me. Trust me that the next time you step up to bat, that with my strength and with my power and the power of my Holy Spirit operating in you, you will be victorious. Amen, amen, amen. I don't know who that's for, but just grab a hold of that word if it's for you today. You know, there's one thing as I close in. We've talked about being victorious. We've talked about hitting home runs. We, you know, it's been kind of fun illustration today using the baseball example. But you know what? I'll tell you what. If you don't have Jesus as your personal savior, I don't know how to say it any clearer. You ain't even on the team. I mean, you're not even in the dugout waiting to be called to bat. You are not on the team. And you're not going to hit anything anywhere without Jesus in your life. And maybe that sounds bold, and maybe, you know, I guess it is bold. But you know what? I absolutely, honestly believe that you need Jesus in your life. You need to accept him as your personal Savior and let him come in and fill you with the power and the authority and the grace and the love to be able to go to bat every time and be successful. And so if you don't know Jesus, it's so simple to invite him into your life. Just take a minute, take it, just stop and say, Jesus, please come into my life. Fill me with who you are, with your power and with your love. Forgive me for my past, Lord. I, I, I lay aside the past and all the things that I tried to do on my own, all the, all the games that I tried to win, all the challenges that I faced, all of the obstacles I tried to overcome without you in my life. I just lay them all aside. And Father, I invite you through the power of your Holy Spirit to come into me and fill me with life and hope and peace and joy in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, you are now a child of God. And all the hope that God has for you is, is now available because you are a born-again Christian. Amen, amen, amen.
Hallelujah. Well, as I close, I just want to uh, give a shout out to everybody that's watching online. Please s send us an email or just get in touch with us somehow. And and also, you know, for those of you that have been contributing to our, our media fund, we're so excited. We're so close to the end. I have to get the final number from the accountant, but I know we're just about there. We've already started shopping for the equipment that we need. But if you'd still like to contribute and uh, and put some money in towards our media fund, our goal, our initial goal is 5000 thousand dollars and we're so close to that but please you know pitch in throw in something uh, towards that so that we can uh, get our new equipment that we need to go forward and then i want to remind you all today if you're watching online or if you're here in person that at city view we want everyone to experience god's real love and live life full of purpose amen <laughs>